have we? Yes, we have. <laughs> Yeah. G'day folks, this is the Coffee Bush Kid in Central Vic. And today, I reckon we're gonna work on uh, thinking outside the square. Or should that actually be swinging outside the property? So we're gonna have a, a bit of a look along here. See what we find. I'm sorry if there's any wind noise. <coughs> See the stand of cypresses? See the new fence? They've trimmed them all. Out along here, there used to be branches. Very hard to get into. But, you know, a cypress hedge <sighs> around an area where, you know, sites of, his, of historic interest, you've got to have a swing, especially when they've just, you know, made it so easy for you. And then you go and you get a signal like this. That's beautiful. I've dug it up. It's out of the ground and this is as far as I've got. Look at that. Oh, I'm thinking it's a half penny, but actually, uh, have we? Have we? Yes, we have. <laughs> There is a florin. Now, it won't be 57 because old George wasn't around then. So that's potentially, there we are, 19, that is 47, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Actually, I'll tell you what, we'll actually have a clean up. Be back with you in a tick. And we are back. There we are. There you go, Mish. 1947 Florin. It is great to work on a theory. George is still a bit green on that side, but that's all right. Because we have a 47 Florin. Working on a hunch, it doesn't get much better than that. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. We've only just started. There we go. We're still going along the fence line there. Well, probably a little bit over halfway. I've got my next decent signal. Look at this one. Everyone pick what that is. Yep. And there it is. It was down in the, in the uh, yellowy soil there. And... Oh, you bastard! <laughs> oh, I thought that was a threepence. That was all that was showing. Ah, oh, it got me. Bloody thing. Well, I'm back up near around about where I got the florin. In that hole there, I got this signal. Look at this. That's a colossal number. And look, I hope it's not bloody aluminium. That's heavy and that's coin-like. Oh, it's another one. It's another one. I'll we'll have to clean that up. That must be pre-46. Looks like 43. Anyway, we'll have a clean up and we'll see what we've got. That's unreal. Alright, we've got someone using a chainsaw post by. There we are. In the sunlight, 1943 Florin. That was a corker of a signal. And Georgie, how's that? Oh, I'm excited about that. I don't think I've got a 43. So that'll be brilliant. That'll make my silver coin book a little bit heavier again. That's brilliant. We'll keep going and see what else we can get here. 
been getting a lot of 16, 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, rubbishy bitsy pieces. Then a 30 jumps out of the ground and you go, oh shit, what's that? And you go, well that's what it is. What is it? I'll tell you what it is. That, you know, that way if you like. That's a pendulum. There you go, as it came out of the ground. So there's where it hung. That's its weight, because it's rather weighty. And down here, as I take you on an engineering bloody tour, see that we've got, I don't know whether you can see it, down in there, in fact it even turns, how about that? It's got uh, flat knurls, not diamond knurls. And we can see it better. There's actually a thread along there, and if you want the, the clock to uh, swing or, you know, gain time, you would wind this up so the pendulum came up so it swung faster. And if you wanted to lengthen the time, you'd wind it down and it would swing lower down. But that is an absolute brilliant find. I'm very, very rep with that. In fact, that's the first pendulum I have found. That is an absolute cracker. Yeah, nice 21, 22. You go, yeah, could be a sixpence, could be a penny, could be lots of things. Was not expecting this. Um, there we are. What do you think it is? What is it? I'll be cruel. I'll show you this one. It's a pin. Pin badge. And we've got that on it. Now I haven't cleaned it up. I can't e ATC? I don't know. We need to clean it up. A AFC? Anyway, we'll clean it up and we'll actually see what we have. Okay, we are back. H F C. Yeah. Harcourt Football Club. And the number at the top is 1939. I don't know whether we get it much better. Maybe there. 1939. There you go. Harcourt Football Club. That is bloody cool as. Very happy with that. Unfortunately, the wind is in the wrong spot, so I'm going to have to come around a different way. But I didn't see this. It was the detector that found it. That's a good signal, isn't it? <laughs> That's a junior, a Texan junior. Ah, the handle's gone, but um, we've got the barrel and we've we've got the hammer. Looks like she was a oh no, yeah maybe only a single shot, just for a junior. Get him into trouble, but can't get themselves out. Huh, huh, huh. Ah, how cool is that? Don't mind finding a toy cap gun. Anyway, we will keep going. There we go, the wind's died down. I swung back over as you're supposed to, and there's the handle. It's a shame it's cracked, but by gee, that's a nice looking little pistol. With a neighing horse there on it potentially one of the horses of the apocalypse certainly bring it down upon you with a little pistol like that anyway that's a cool find and we found it let's keep going we'll do this one live together i've only got the signals down there but look at that we go whorehound and there's lots of it Anyone that's been watching me 
knows what I think about whorehound. Mm -mm -mm. So, down here we have this signal. Three bars down. It's not very big. It's just in there. I reckon we'll dig that, and with any luck, we'll find a silver coin down the bottom of the hole. Or in the plug. Or, oh, or, did you just spot something? Mm. And it's got glass. That'll do it. Bloody bottle top. The booby trap on it. You gotta watch that with bare hands. I can hear my sister now. Where's your bloody gloves? Yep, they're in the ute. Anyway, we'll keep going. You aren't going to believe this. Um, about where my finger is there is where I dug up the cap gun. Now I'm back here later in the day, so I dug the cap gun in two pieces up there. I've just got a really thumping 26, 28 signal. I've dug down in the hole, I've lifted it out. We've got his mate, but this one, this one's not broken. And yep, it's the same, it's the same one. So I have a pair of pistols. Bloody cool's that? That's unbelievable. Like I'm getting a good collection of cap guns at home from out of the ground, but yeah, I've not had one like this. That's, I've got something crawling on me. Look at this bloody thing. It's heading to danger zone. Get away, get away. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I'm wrapped with that. Anyway, let's keep going, see what else we can find. The Texan Junior Cap Guns by Hubley. Hubley was from Lancaster, Pennsylvania and started in 1894. The Hubley Co. made some of the finest cap guns you ever saw. The Texan and Texan Junior were so popular that Hubley made quite a few different variations in many different finishes. Some were even finished in gold. This pair seems to be a little bit on the rare side as the handles have horses on them. All the other Texan Junior photos that you see on the internet have the Texan Longhorn on their handles. And, I got that. Now that is a tube of something. It's got some shiny on it. But the numbers, uh, what were they? I can't for the life of me remember. Anyway, um, you know, it could be aluminium. It could be silver. Don't know. But it's something very interesting. You'll get a laugh out of this one. Down there, 27, 28 signal. Always, always get your attention. <laughs> Top off a sardine can. Always worth digging. <laughs> bloody hell. Oh, you wouldn't bloody believe it, it was. Look at that beautiful islet. You gotta dig a thing like that. What a bastard. They are actually clips off the front of a woman's corset. May well have been a man's corset just quietly, but it was supposed to be a woman's corset. And there's about five or six go down the front and it makes it easy for clipping. The back of the corset's where all the lace work is. Where you get strung right up. And there was that. Which is a, a tensioner, if you like, for a belt. But that's very, very thin. I would say poor quality. But uh, and that came in at a 10. In that hole, Though it was a 16, and I probably should have dug it before, but we've got a button. But 
this is a cool little button. I'll just get the magnifying glass to see if we can't do what we did last time. That says A Calder Melbourne. Might not be able to be better that way actually. Yeah, there we go. A Calder Melbourne. A little two holer. It's actually a really thick and chunky little button. Anyway, that's a nice one. It's always cool to find them with riding on. When I'm merging around, you know, getting bits of brass and stuff and things. Then all of a sudden, I hit. <coughs> well, actually, I'll show you what I've got here. It was actually 21, 22 in the ground. We've got that. That will be. Oops. I stop dropping it. A, um, a little brooch, I would half imagine. Well, this is heavy. This might be silver. We'll take it home and try it out in electrolysis. See what happens. But that is a cool little find. Yeah, you never know what you're going to find. Down there, that was where I got the brooch from. I got a solid 14. It was nothing more, nothing less. 14, which of course is under my 15 discrimination. And it has been a long while since I've got out an anchor button. And that's just a little weeny one. Still got the shank on it. Riding on the back there that I might be able to find out what sort it is. But they are just the coolest little find. And the other thing is, is, is too, that once you start taking, as I've said, in trash sites, you start taking out signals and it lets other signals breathe so probably much the same theory but of course if you go out and you discriminate on a site it then means that you can come back and hunt it again without all the big signals in the way yeah, yeah, yeah. potentially there could be a gold ring here in the nines i don't know we'll see what happens well i've got to the end of the of where I was heading to. I won't show you too much there. Uh, we didn't get much more than those uh, at the end, other than the uh, the cap guns and that. That was the last big find. No more coins or anything, but it was certainly well worth going around the outside of the property. This place that, uh, oh, it's a place of horses for courses, or in fact, vice versa. But uh, yeah, look, always go around the outside of a property you might not have a permission to go into the property but uh, if it's a roadside and that you can certainly go around the outside and you never know what we'll find we're a few silvers up and that's always a good thing so keep in mind always good to fill in some of your day detecting but remember to fill in all your holes when you're finished we'll catch you next time g'day folks this is the coffee bush kid in central vic and I have a cautionary tale for you. When you go out detecting, there are certain pieces of equipment you should take. You know, summertime, take your snake armor. Uh, you'd be lost without your pinpointer. You always need something to dig with. A detector is pretty good to take with your detecting. But if you happen to be filming and you might be a youtuber -y type person and everything like that you should take your bloody phone with you now twice i've done it this week and i'm going to tell you it's only wednesday we get back from playing with deb and mish down on the beach area there and mish says to me i suppose you're going to go out as soon as you get home and find a token well i did try that what I did find, though, with no phone, was this beautiful bloody woman's buckle. Look at the workmanship in that. That's just, that's just beautiful. No way around it. That's beautiful. So not only did I find one, well, I found two. Look at that glorious thing. Did I have a phone? No. Nope. The kid left it at home. So I go out tonight. I'm just going out for an hour. You know, relax, unwind, everything like that, as you do, good mental health. And once I got my first target, 
I realised I didn't have a phone. So what, of course, did I find? Well, I've got, whether that's going to focus or not, that's a 1954 sixpence. We're fast running out of sunlight. There we go, that might, might do it better for us. 1954 sixpence. That'll clean up a treat. And, you know, what do you find six inches down under a branch, under a, a root? You find a coin like that. Can't get a date off it. But when we turn it over and put it into the light, there's young Vicky. She looks glorious, but the coin's in shocking condition. But this was the last coin I found. The second last coin, see that clump? Clump did a dump, dump, dump. I've brought it home for us. So there we go. I dig that up. Oh, it was a glorious 29, 30, 31 signal. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes. No phone, no footage. There it is. So I brought the clump home for us. So now, together, we can take that out. Right. The sun's about to go behind next door's roof. So let's let's get this little beauty out. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a ram's head. What year is it? 54, is it? As per usual. 44. 44. Well, that's pretty cool. They're a glorious coin, the old ram's head. So that'll be George. Look, there he is. That's absolutely magnificent. 44 ram's head shilling. Oh. So, when you go out, take your phone with you. And then you can capture these things and you don't have to bring clods of dirt home with you. But anyway, at least you saw it coming out of the clod. Marvellous.